Hi and welcome to this special episode of This Is Your Life, paying tribute to our sporting heroes. We're here in Canberra, outside the Australian Institute of Sport, where so many of our young sportsmen and women train to one day become champions. From Dawn Fraser and Don Bradman, to Cathy Freeman and Ian Thorpe, sports and its champions have long held a deep place in the hearts of all Australians. And I, I just sort of think it's Over the last sort of few years we've paid again. tribute to many wonderful <laughs> Aussie greats on This Is Your Life. <laughs> Athletics, <laughs> football, <laughs> cricket, <laughs> swimming, <laughs> tennis, you name it and we've honoured them. And not just for their sporting <laughs> results either, <laughs> but for their drive and dedication. Tonight we invite you to come along as we look back at some of the proud moments these well, men and women have given us. Organising the surprise, or the sting as we call it, always requires a lot of planning. But where the guest of honour will be on the day is something we can't always control, even if that means turning up on their doorstep and catching them in their jammies. Ah. Don Talbot. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get you in your jammies? No, I'm just shaving. <laughs> uh, Don, uh... Uh, you don't mind us, Barge. We didn't wake you up, I hope. No, you. no, he didn't wake me up. Don Talbot, this <laughs> is your life. <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty proud of you at what you achieved the Olympics, <laughs> and uh, we're going to do the show very shortly. <laughs> Are you really? Yes. <laughs> well, can I get dressed? Or yes. Can I do that? <laughs> yes. Aha. Uh -huh. we... What's going on here? <laughs> Good and shady. How are you, mate? You guys are kidding me. Yeah? You were expecting uh, Don Burke, I think, weren't you? Well, I was just about ready to say his Don is good. <laughs> Kevin Cheedy, this is your laugh. You're unbelievable, you people. Don't open it. You can't <laughs> open it. It's got the whole show in there. That's right. We are about to do, to do it. Um, sorry about that. That is the way you trick people, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. I hope you got a confession soon. <laughs> 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 I've got it, man. <laughs> You're a dead woman. Because we're so proud of you, I've got to do it. No, oh, you don't. I'm beastly. You could have told me as a camera came in my house, I would have put clothes on. <laughs> well, there's certainly proof our stings are genuine. Now have a look at some other sporting greats we've surprised over the years and how they reacted to being set up. Nice smile, well. <laughs> Wally Lewis, this is your life. Thanks, mate. It was a good guess. It was a good guess. Hook, line, and sinker, I think it's called. You took your time. <laughs> we thought you were never going to get out of the chopper. <laughs> no way. Drink any, you this is your life. Oh, no. I thought I had a deal with the people who work for me. Is that right? Mm. You better sack them. Obviously, I need some new employees now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sack, Lance. All the best, mate. All the best. Have fun. David Foster. How are you? This is your life, mate. You're joking. I am not joking. Oh. You thought your big moment was over, but it's just about to start. There's another one about to start. Congratulations. I don't believe that. Congratulations, sure. David. Thank you very much. Alan Langer. How are you, mate? You're good, pal. What's going on here? Alan Langer, this is your life. <laughs> I'd like to invite all Australians to take part in the biggest celebration of this century, Australia's Centenary of Federation 2001. OK, do you want to do the second part? What is it? Yeah. What is it? Hey, man. Oh, this is... Are you serious? <laughs> this is your life. Are you guys serious? <laughs> Come shake your hand, mate. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. This has all been set up. But don't worry, it's only in front of two or three million people and 200 people in the audience. You're not really serious. 
That's why we're here. <laughs> I don't believe this. I really don't believe this. Why me? <laughs> as modest as ever, ultramarathon runner Pat Farmer has raised millions of dollars for special causes and was certainly one of our most humble guests of honour. In fact, Pat and his children provided viewers with one of the most emotional moments we've ever shared. Everything is on track. But then, in one instant, your entire world falls apart. On the 7th of May last year, you receive an urgent phone call from police. Lisa has had a heart attack and died instantly at the wheel of her car. She was only 31 years old. You thank God that she had just dropped the children off at daycare. Now, what kept you going? Geez, I don't, I, I really don't know, Mike, to be quite honest with you, I, I, um... The kids? It was the worst day of my life. Well, Pat, with your family's permission, we've put together a tribute to Lisa, and it, and it all comes from motivational tapes. We've used her voice from tapes that she sent you for your various runs. And it sums up beautifully, ladies and gentlemen, everything that you two meant to each other. We'll see some of our usually composed sporting greats squirm in their seats. It seems you're destined for a fashion career. Just have a look at these two supermodels. <laughs> The next guest we feature always dreamt of playing football for his favourite club. In the end, he became its club president. We surprised Collingwood man Eddie Maguire on the set of his top rating television show. And even Eddie was momentarily lost for words. I'm not kidding. It's a big rap. Eddie Maguire, this is your <laughs> life. <laughs> you, thought, you thought you were doing two shows tonight? Yes, right? I did think I was doing two shows tonight. Which means there's a lot of friends and family who are going to be in a lot of trouble when I see them in a few moments' time. But look at this. Well, you are still doing two shows. It's good. But the second one's not many. <laughs> Eddie Maguire is speechless. Is, that, is, this, is this the case? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. Yes, I am absolutely <laughs> flabbergasted. And that was just the start of it all for poor old Eddie. Imagine his delight when we managed to dig up an old audition tape he thought had long since disappeared. I'll get the sack here. There's been good and bad news following the reduction of interest rates. The good news is, for, is following the $21 a month reduction. No, stop. The good news follows a $21 a month. Stop. What am I doing? $21 a month saving on the average loan of $30,000 a year. Well, no, it's not a year. There has been good and bad news following the... Re <laughs> There's been good and bad news following the reduction in interest rates. The, the reduction has resulted in a $21... The good news is that... Stop, thanks. The bad news for ANZ and National Australia bank borrowers is that their cuts... 
The good news is they didn't put me on a train and send me back to Broadmeadows straight away. <laughs> Our team often find footage that even the guest of honour hasn't seen for years. And it's those embarrassing moments which really make This Is Your Life what it is. And of course it's not long before sponsors are clamouring to snap you up. Lisa, we've been walking for oh. ages. Oh, I'll give you a Toby's muesli bar. Hooray! We reached the lookout. I could write a book on the world's worst hairstyles and I would be in every page. <laughs> <laughs> They're shockers. Then at 11, you briefly find yourself as a budding actor in the telly movie <laughs> Riverbend. Oh, no. There he goes. Sell those shoes. Oh, wait. Get out of the way. Oh. Was that, was that really you? Oh, I used to do it at the Warford La Perouse. You know, diving from that height was nothing. So, yeah. you know, so yeah, no stunt man for did you? all my own stunts. <laughs> By the time you're a teenager, you're an accomplished player. But, Andrew, you'll never be a karaoke singer. Oh, Jesus. In the jungle, <laughs> the jungle the <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, nothing is sacred. <laughs> That's right, Andrew, nothing is sacred. And then there are the so-called mates who are more than willing to tell a tale out of school on national television. <laughs> Rod, how did you find him as a roommate? Well, I found him a bit of a shocker myself. Um, what? You know, you, <laughs> Everyone you else with it. Your, your okay. self-confidence just gets uh, thrown right out the window. Um, you wake up in the morning without a lie, uh, there's not a, a hair out of place. <laughs> <laughs> I look in the mirror, I, I scare myself. But, uh, you know, he's the sort of guy who makes you realise how bloody ugly you are. But, uh, <laughs> Ian, you tell a very funny story about, uh, about sharing a bed with him one night. We go into the bedroom and there's one bed, big double bed. So right over, we hop into bed. Rodney right over that side of the bed. I'm right over this side of the bed. There's one of those switches that you just pull with the thing. I said to Rodney, you ready to go to sleep? Yep. So I pull the cord down and I thought, right, I'm playing against him tomorrow, or sorry, today at golf. He's very competitive. Maybe I might beat him. So I reach over and I grab him on the old fella, you see. <laughs> and I reckon he levitated. I reckon about two feet... <laughs> Two feet off the bed. That was me that levitated. <laughs> oh, <buddy>. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, just get that straight. The whole body. The whole body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was never going to get that high, was it, Rodney? <laughs> I remember the first time I ever met Nova. Uh, it was like a scene from Greece. I was a new girl at school and um, I remember sitting in the classroom and uh, in walked Nova with these two other girls strutting their stuff and uh, stood in front of these guys and started singing a song about girls being strong like King Kong. And then she did this big spin and lifted her skirt and showed it all to the guys and I thought, what a bloody show off. <laughs> now, now, Danny, Greg doesn't only like to win on the golf course. Is that true? No, he's, uh, he's a pretty good sport, but uh, the one thing that riles him more than anything Thing is to lose and it doesn't matter what we're doing we've done a lot of stuff whether it's uh, jet skis in Florida or Crazy snowmobiles <laughs> in Aspen where he accused me of trying to kill him uh, or even a couple times when we raced home from dinner and it was yeah. like the Indy 500 but the one thing about him he can't stand to lose and you beat him racing I, home I beat him a few times He's beat me every time <laughs> in, in fact don't you have a nickname for Danny uh, no, I think I do, but I'm not going to say it. What okay. is it? No, no. no. I'm not going to say it. I mean, well, you call me wanker a lot, but... Uh... <laughs> well, these people down here don't understand what that is. <laughs> One of the crucial ingredients on This Is Your Life is family. They are instrumental in helping us with our research and filling us in on what our guests of honour are really like once they leave the field. And we found that behind every sports star is a devoted, adoring mum. So coming up after the break, we'll meet 
some of those heroines who have raised heroes. Andrew, does your mum play? Uh, I've never seen her play. Uh, <laughs> Haven't you? No. Never. I don't know whether she... I don't even think I've ever seen her shoot a basket. Well, it just so happens... <laughs> <laughs> ..that we have a basketball here and a hoop. Mrs Gaze, would you mind having a shot for us? Oh, I'd love to have a shot, just right. to show Andrew that there's more than one in the family. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's no way this is going in. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> One of our funniest sporting heroes we've paid tribute to is Larrikin and former AFL player Lou Richards. We surprised him in Victoria Park in Melbourne in front of a crowd of 30,000, something which would normally make most people just want to hide under a nearby rock. But not our Lou. Lou Richards, this is your life. Oh, you're a <laughs> You're okay, man. You're okay. No, you're not. You're kidding. What do you reckon, everyone? Now, while Lou's mum couldn't be with him on the night, she was still very much a part of the show with her message to him. I love you very much. May I pray to you. Have a good night. Well, she's a marvel. She still tells my brother and I what to do all the time. She's a, <laughs> she's a real dictator. And you, and you do it? Well, I do it. And if I ever say anything, she says, don't you be cheeky, I'll belt you one. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's see some of our other elite sports stars with some of the most adoring women in their lives, their mums. <laughs> you must be one proud mum. Uh, yes, very proud, Mike. I guess I thought at an early age that he would be successful when he was about nine, I think. He said to me, Mum, I'm going to buy myself a bike. And I thought, how is he going to do this? <laughs> but he mowed lawns and did odd jobs and got the money and he did it. And um, I think that was an indication of what was to come. Um, he is very, appears to be very tough. He is on the outside, but he's got a very soft side too. Softy underneath. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on you like a cat on you. <laughs> Now, Barbara Janet certainly had her ups and downs, hasn't she? Yes, but she's come a long way. Living overseas, it was very hard to get over there a lot, but we managed it every year somehow and saw her win all the major the tournaments that she won. And we're both very proud of the 29 tournaments that you've won throughout the world. Yeah. And you know, Jan, you always say to me, keep well. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, Mum. <laughs> Tony, was Greg always a golf fanatic? No, he wasn't. He, um, he preferred to play other sports, but one day he decided to come and caddy for me when he had nothing else to do. That and was that... a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely bored that day, right? <laughs> but he decided he'd um, try and go out and play with my golf sticks, so um, he was hooked after that, and then I ended up caddying for him. And... <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's a 2.5 kilogram of Cadbury's chocolate, Mike, which she absolutely enjoys. I love chocolate. Was that yeah. right? Yeah. Look at you, you're both all teary. <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be um, tough night. <laughs> <laughs> Kath, what sort of a son is he? He's a wonderful boy. He's given us much pleasure. And I love him so much. You should be very proud of him. Yes, I am. Stay with us, because after the break, we meet some sports stars with mates in high places. Tom, you're a fanatical sporting fan and always say you'd sell your soul just to play rugby league for Australia. And he would have been a great 5'8 too. 
It's the man you do call God, <laughs> former manly first grader and international, Des Hasler. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom actually wrote a book about you, right? Oh, he did write the book, and, uh, and from that has uh, come a very uh, special friendship, uh, one on which I'm most grateful for and honoured to share. And uh, I'd just like to say that you are indeed a great man and have uh, touched the lives of so many people. Now, you'd think that celebrities in the field of showbiz and the media would have heroes or people they look up to in their own industries. But in fact, many of them turn to the sporting greats for their inspiration, or in the case of maestro Jeff Harvey, for his frustration. It's an Australian rugby league legend and former captain, Johnny Raper. Oh, <laughs> What a frustrated footballer this guy is, there's no doubt about it. Jeff, what about the times, the Wentworth Hotel, when we challenged I wouldn't go it. down that line if I was you, actually. <laughs> Lou, you two could be brothers, couldn't you? Well, I'm a lot younger than Bruce, of course. And, uh, <laughs> but he has been a... Uh, well, he's been a great man. Except that I'm more famous than his, he doesn't know that. <laughs> But the point is this, he's been a fanatical Collingwood supporter for uh, 70 years and we're very proud to have him at Collingwood. And of course, uh, Bruce talks black and whenever he speaks it's in black and white. And all the Collingwood fans agree with him, but not necessarily that the people outside, Bruce. <laughs> but I say this to you, congratulations, and you've done a marvellous job, mate, and God bless you. You've been a, you're a great footballer, Lou. Well, I know that, Bruce, and... Uh... <laughs> Now, you wrote Jeff a particularly touching letter after his loss to Azuma, didn't you? Definitely so. I read the letter many, many times. I still read it today when I go through my book, and it's um, very, very true. Nick, you were a great loser. And I know that sounds dumb, but, but losing takes an enormous character. It's easy uh, to win, it's hard to lose. Absolutely, and you did it with a great deal of style, and I shall always admire you enormously for that. Thank you. Yeah. Frank, what did you think when, when George first joined Soccer Australia? What did you think about it? Well, I was most probably along with a lot of other soccer people in Australia, and I thought, well, George Negus in soccer, I mean, what's in it for him? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think over the years he's proved that he has a genuine passion for the game, and and wants it to go in all the right places like all of us here. And uh, I suppose it brings me to presenting you, George, what I regard as a, a true champion with uh, the Brisbane Strikers champion jersey. Oh, thanks, Ray. Well, that's right. Yeah. Champions. The real reason I got into, involved in soccer was so that I could meet legends like Frank and get shirts for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Steve, he actually trained with you guys at one stage, didn't he? Well, he did. Well, where? We're all probably frustrated rock stars, <laughs> and, and he's a frustrated footballer. But we did get him to training one day, and we ran four laps, and he did one. At the end of one lap, he decided to remain a frustrated footballer. <laughs> but uh, frustrated. John is a good mate, and he's, he's always been a, a fantastic Parramatta man. And we've got a, a few things here today to give you that will perhaps relieve your frustrations. Firstly, uh, a Parramatta jersey as worn by Peter Sterling or a bloke who looks like Peter Sterling. I don't think he'll fit you. A Parramatta autographed football. Oh, God. And, and for my very good friend here with a fine head of skin. We've got a, a very we've special got thing. We, we've all got our Premiership medals and we thought it would be only appropriate that someone as big a supporter as you oh, would get your Premiership medal as well. And that, something else too, John, it's, it's a bag to put it all in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Wayne, where do you fit here? Obviously in a couple of places, but uh, <laughs> well, it's not obviously, but uh, I'm sort of partly responsible for uh, Tim and Samantha, so I've been told that they've, uh, were, you know, from a couple of big nights out in London and New York, yes. Yeah, and, it was yeah. out uh, on big nights with Wayne Grady that we actually pinpointed the night, and um, unfortunately, Wayne, you were responsible for both <laughs> occasions. Well, but, uh, thank God they don't look like him. <laughs> People say, Greg, that uh, Molly was around the team so much that he should have been a part of it. 
Well, that's probably just about right. Uh, not only in Melbourne, Molly used to come up to Sydney pretty regularly, uh, especially for the night games, and was always there and was one of our great supporters through, through that period and uh, was always welcome in the dressing room and spent, uh, <laughs> spent a lot of time in the dressing room. <laughs> I no, couldn't, I'm joking. I, I'm I couldn't, couldn't understand why until one night we were, we were heading out for a drink. We had a few drinks in the dressing room. We were going out for a drink afterwards and I'd had a shower and forgetting myself, I sort of threw the towel down and started packing my bag and someone yelled out, look out. And I jumped up and said, don't do that. I thought Molly was behind me. <laughs> but I heard Molly's voice in the background. He said, when you hang with Mick Jagger and Rod Stewart and the Bay City Rollers, why would you bother with Greg Chappell? So. You ain't got no <laughs> And coming up after the break, we get under the skin of some of Australia's most popular sporting personalities. Then in March this year, you have what you think is a benign lump removed from your breast. Your doctor then informs you that you have breast cancer. You undergo surgery and chemotherapy, and as if that isn't enough, the very next month, your mum, Reen, passes away after a long battle herself against cancer. It's now your optimism and drive which gets you through the treatment. And you've always been very positive about this, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, I've got no doubt I'll beat it. Yeah. Well, our next sporting hero is one honoured among the top 100 athletes of last century. Olympic icon, Dawn Fraser. As Australia's greatest ever Olympian, she has smashed 39 world records over the years and therefore endured five decades of adoration. Now, Roger Clemson first presented her with the Red Book back in 1979. At the time, Dawn owned a pub in Balmain and was in the middle of an illegal game of cards when Roger and his camera crew arrived. Fearing the pub was being raided, Dawn was suddenly nowhere to be found. She's left the pub, just wait around right here. Where's she gone? She bolts outside and picks up a few glasses to throw the crew off the scent. But there's no fooling Roger Clemson. G'day, Dawn. Come on. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> you can't get away from me. Dawn Fraser, this is your life. Thank you. <laughs> Come over now. And have a look at her. She's about to do a runner again as we tried to surprise her a couple of years ago on Sydney's Bondi Beach. Dawn Fraser. Dawn Fraser. <laughs> Dawn Fraser, this is your life. <laughs> Good place, <isn't> it? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> oh, you guys are in on it. I saw the book and I thought, oh, he wants an autograph, but I'll ignore him. Did I get it? <laughs> <laughs> they can swim, but they can't hide. And like everyone else, athletes have their highs and lows. Moments of glory and times of weakness. But it's when they overcome those obstacles and hurdles in their lives that we admire them even more. Here we examine some of the more emotional moments of our sporting greats. And it was Dawn Fraser who shared with us one of her deepest sorrows, the death of her mother. So now you set your sights on your third Olympics, this time in Tokyo. But then everything comes to a tragic halt when you're involved in a shocking car accident. Your mother dies and you are seriously injured. Now, you were the driver, weren't you? Yes, I was. And can you tell us what happened? Well, um, it was the last night of the uh, national championships and the team had been announced to go to Tokyo. And um, uh, Belmain Leagues Club had put on a um, function for my mother and my, fa and my family. And we were all there. And, and uh, it, got, it was getting late at night and mum said, would I drive my sister Rosie home, who lived out at Koima? And I said, yes, I would, but I was tired and I wanted to go quickly, go, leave soon and then and get home. And it was unfortunate there was a car, a truck parked that we couldn't see because as it was General Holmes Drive then, uh, it was very dark at night time and, and the uh, truck didn't have any, uh, any tail lights on it. It had all uh, mud splashed over the back of it. And just at the last time, at last moment, I saw the, the uh, truck and I swerved to miss it. And I'd forgotten it was a, um, uh, it was one of the first power steering cars in, in Australia and the car flipped over and killed mum and uh, injured my sister and my girlfriend and myself. And you've had to live with that ever since? Yeah, so it's been difficult, but I've got a great family and uh, they've helped me through it. 
But while golfing might come easy to you, socialising does not. You're extremely shy. So you decide, if you are to be the best, you're going to have to come out of your shell. How difficult was that? Well, it was very difficult, Mike, because I remember winning the West Lakes Classic and I was standing in the corner of the, um, of the room in the clubhouse and, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm thinking, you just won this golf tournament. If you're going to be as good as what you think you can be and what you want to be, you've got to get out there and mingle. And uh, part, of, part of life and, and golf that I didn't understand at that time was the other side, communicating with people. And uh, that very time, I remember standing in the back left-hand corner of the room with my big white belt on and my green shirt and my white right. pants. Oh, my own, yeah. I had a beer in my hand. That was my only friend there. But, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I knew then that um, I felt good about my future and I had to come out of that shell that uh, I, was, I was very much an introvert as a kid growing up. Now, the, what should have been one of your greatest moments becomes a turning point that could end your brief career. You collide with Italian rider Franco Uncini while he's trying to scramble off the track. Uncini is rushed to hospital in a coma. Now, how did you react to that? <clears throat> that was the worst part of my whole career, I guess. You know, um, it's pretty sad. I thought that if he died, I was going to quit my career. You'd made up your mind? That was it. It affected you that much? Yeah. And obviously still does? Still has. How was he these days? Oh, he's fine. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just... <laughs> no, he's fine now. Um, it just left a nasty you know, memory in your, in, your, in your mind. And when you're only 15, your wonderful dad is diagnosed with lung cancer. So you spend the next 10 long months being dad's little helper. Then on a winter's morning in 1977, the whole family is called to your father's bedside. And it's here he whispers something to you that still remains with you today. What did he say? Oh, I was crying, you know, I was just saying my final words to him. And he said, don't cry, you know, go out and wash those, you know, tissues and hang them out to dry. And he said, you know, you will one day represent Australia and win gold. I know that in you. And I thought he was dreaming, you know. But those words just were with me for the, my whole career. It was amazing. And only hours after that, that same afternoon, mm -hmm. he falls into a coma That's right. and passes away. Well, growing up, you never really notice racism until your late teens. And it's now people really start to treat you differently. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at one stage, you were rejected for a job, weren't you? That's right. I um, applied for a job through the newspaper and um, I had all the qualifications sent it in and I got a phone call to say, yes, you know, we want you, can you start tomorrow? So I went in there and I was sitting down on the couch and the lady said, oh, can I help you? And she said, oh, um, I said, I'm Nova Paris, I'm here for the job. Oh, okay. And um, I only, you know, lasted up to lunch. She said, you're no longer required. And, and then I got a phone call late that afternoon saying that um, they wanted a 17-year-old, not an 18-year-old. And, you know, it just sort of really broke my heart. And um, a week later, the same job was advertised for an 18-year-old. So, you know, at the same time, you know, people can, you know, knock me down. And that's, I just get tougher. And get straight back up. That's right. <laughs> And it's that very spirit and tenacity that drives these elite athletes to succeed. And coming up, we meet the little people who keep our sporting heroes focused. Ooh. Jamie Lee, you play football with Dad in the backyard too, don't you? <laughs> What's he like? My dad isn't very good at football <laughs> anymore. When, last year when we were playing football in the backyard, he broke his toe <laughs> when he tried to side set me. But Dad is my hero. Now, champion athletes have heroes of their own. And sometimes they're pretty big names. Over the years, the team here at This Is Your Life has managed to organise for some of those heroes to take part in our show, even though they couldn't make it to Australia. This is your life, Greg Norman. I don't know if this is a roast or a tribute, but I do know something about Greg Norman. And I know the respect that all sportsmen in America have for this man. Indeed, some of us would like to see him transfer his citizenship to the United States. Impossible, though, because Australia's never had a more patriotic son. I salute him. I hope you know that I love your country. I hope you know that I'm familiar with your love of sports. And I hope you know that I have great respect and admiration for the shark, one of a kind, 
a great leader in golf, and a warm human being whom Barbara and I are proud to consider friend. You've got a wonderful life, Greg. Keep it up. Now, later you do eventually meet your other idol, Muhammad Ali, don't you? I do, yes. How, yeah. did, you, how did that come about? Well, uh, I've met uh, Muhammad Ali uh, through uh, great friends of ours, the uh, Eloise Weisslitz and Alex Weisslitz and uh, Richard Pratt, and uh, we caught up with them there and uh, actually had a photo taken standing between Peter McKenna and Muhammad Ali. It was a pretty good day for me. Well, thanks to the Pratt family, Muhammad Ali sends you this. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to say I'm angry. Why am I angry? Somebody called me this morning, told me, won't you come to New York? This is a guy named Eddie. Won't you say hello to him? And I was tired. I came over here just to say hello to you. And I want to punch in your nose. When I see you, I'm going to bust you in your nose. Be cool. You're no fool. You've been to school. Beverly Buckingham King was Australia's leading woman jockey when her career was irrevocably cut short. She was involved in a terrifying fall from her horse during a race. Doctors told her she would probably never walk again, but she found a great deal of inspiration from someone whose life was also shattered in a riding accident. Hi Bev, it's Chris Reeve wishing you the very best and sending you tremendous congratulations on the last year. Uh, from what I understand, you're taking small steps now, and, uh, and that's, that's amazing. That means that, uh, that current in, is going up and down uh, from uh, high up in the spinal cord down to your lumbar region, and uh, that's terrific. I mean, it's really, really great, and uh, the way the small steps now are going to mean big steps soon, and... Uh, there are all those people around the world with spinal cord injuries. Uh, and you and I should send the word out that uh, anybody says you'll never do something, you'll never walk, you'll never get up, whatever, just ignore it because uh, all the conventional wisdom's going out the window as we find uh, new possibilities in the spinal cord, new approaches. Uh, your example is a real message of hope for people around the world. And I salute you and congratulate you. And uh, maybe sometime I'll get down under and we can meet. But meanwhile, congratulations and lots of love. Now, while it's a practice for some not to work with children and animals, we here at This Is Your Life find it all the more spontaneous when we do because you just never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> Go on. Okay, tell us. <laughs> Smiley key, what is it? Um, a couple of weeks ago, Mum was too tired, so she let us stay home from school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Glenn. Oh, I'm not getting up there. I'm not getting up there. Mark, go on. Hop on. I'm not getting up there. Come on, Jen. That's a quickie. Hey? I'll get up there. Oh, oh, I don't know why you get up there. Oh. Yeah, get, get Mark up there. Step ladder. How am I going to get up there? Power, power down. Power down. How am I going to get up there? Get up there. Get up there, Mark. Hey? Leg up there. Yep. Jump up. How? How? Hang on. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> what have you got there, Courtney? Um. This. It's my photo of Brocky. I love you, Brocky. Don't go. Oh, thank you, Brocky. <laughs> 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 and Courtney, 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 you've always wanted to do something with Mr. Brock, haven't you? What was yes. that? Um, has it go in his car? With Mr. Brock? Yes. Can that be arranged? We have maybe? to do it, don't we? <laughs> I mean, it just has to happen. <laughs> You'll let me retire then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you. Sit down. Raylene, in March this, this year... The happy family, Mike. I'm sorry? The happy family. The happy family. I missed you. <laughs> Here they are, the rest of the Payne dynasty. Bridget. <laughs> Therese. Marie. Bernadette. Margaret, Andrew, 
Kathy, Stephen, and Michelle. <laughs> what about you? Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, they can't be here with us tonight, but they tell us they're taking great care of the house and cars and everything else in Florida, and they send you this message. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, Mom and Dad. Guess what? We're home alone. <laughs> but the boat's fine, Dad. And don't worry, the bike's going well, too. And I've taken the Ferrari for a spin, too, Dad. Congratulations on tonight. We're very proud of you, and we'll see you next week. Congratulations, Dad. Bye. Bye. You haven't seen him since you were 15 years of age. It's Kestrel. <laughs> Now, I believe you, Tom, are pretty, uh, pretty good at uh, knowing all the players and their numbers in the AFL. Yeah. Tr true? How good are you? Pretty good. Can I give you... <laughs> what? Can I give you a test? Yes. OK. <laughs> Who is number 43 for Carlton? Good. Good Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Spot on. Here's a hard one. Number 16 for Essendon. Barnard. <laughs> pretty good. Very good. Well, well, it's obvious why Australians gain so much inspiration and encouragement from our sporting champions. These men and women not only demonstrate obvious talent and determination, but they represent the true Aussie spirit. Faith, guts and the confidence they need to succeed. They show us over and over again that if we truly believe in ourselves, we can achieve almost anything. Thanks again for having us. Good night.